They stole one. They stole one. They stole one. They the stole Bears one from a, stole a game from a better team, from a contender. They sneaked up on him. Everything worked out to their advantage, and the smarter, more disciplined, more resilient team won. Ah, did you ever think that you would be saying that about the Chicago Bears? No, but that, that was a tight ship in a storm. But that was. It's very poetic. And, and very, oh man, we got shorts and hoodie weather today, Dan. I mean, it's kind of that for me all the time, but we got it today. And yesterday was, it was great. It was, it was great to see that game turn. And you know how you and I have been having this conversation and people have laughed at us when we've brought them on and we've talked about the low bar that's being set for the Bears, where you and I have been like, how about you just get competent? That's yesterday. Yesterday, you saw the Bears raise their competency floor. And you can win games that way. Yes, it was extreme conditions. But those are the moments when you're looking for leadership to take place. And you saw it play out with the Bears yesterday with Matt Eberflus. That is a culture-setting win. That is exactly what you need to begin a regime, to emerge from that chaos under that kind of control is unlikely. And Eberflus led, I thought Luke Getze also was very steady in sticking with the run, even though it wasn't really working, it was working. That, that's a lesson that some coaches never learn, that you're setting up other things by not giving up on your run game. And using the quarterback to help set up your pass game with the run game. I thought Justin Fields also was a probably a better leader than passer. Yes, I, I would agree with that. And Texter, I'm with you on this. I don't like the Baby Bears thing either. That was a grown man win yesterday. It was I, a grown-ass man win last night. He means Baby Bears because of the youth of the no, roster I, I and know. the number of rookies. I know, but when, but yeah. I, when I heard it yesterday, when I heard the call yesterday, I was like, Ugh, no, grown man win yesterday. Grown man! It's you a, call the grown man bears now. Because <laughs> that was a grown man win. Like you say, Bears fans earned that. They got what they went for. They got what they paid for. They're wet and hysterical. And you you were paid back for your commitment yesterday. Look at the way that that game started. It felt very familiar. There were a lot of things with how the offense played in the first half of that game that felt like it wasn't connected to some of the stuff that we saw in the preseason. Now, we have to keep saying this. With the conditions being what they were, I'm not sure that you can make any real evaluation on either one of these two very talented young quarterbacks. But to see the Bears then adjust to, to see them say, okay, we can do some things and we can pick them apart. To see the defensive guys understand tendencies. To, to really take to the coaching of the team and then applying it. Anyone who, who has ever taught anything, whether it's a parent with a child or teacher with a student, a coach with a player, there's nothing better than this is going to happen. This thing that I'm showing you is going to happen. The student then being like, Really? And then they see it and they go, holy crap, you were right. That, that, I, I'm i getting ready to intercept this ball. It's the difference takeaways make, no matter what kind of defense you're playing, when you, when you can be losing, and it never looked like the Bears were even going to threaten to win the game. When it was 10 nothing, it looked like they had lost the game. It looked like it was 100 to nothing. And you, you take the ball away. And you realize the points that come off the board or the opportunities that you give yourself and how demoralizing it can be, that's the formula. That is that. That is the formula of discipline, conditioning, everything that he said, everything that Eberflus said was on display. Now, let's, let, let's big picture. They're not a good football team. They're probably going to win six or seven games. That's just a fact. Because injuries will expose the roster. They're not very good. 
But, but there's no reason to not have a little bit of hope. There's a bigger picture. There's no reason to allow this to have a little bit of life. And I don't know how long some of the, the, the old-fashioned football stuff lasts. And Eberflus himself, as the team gets better, and as they start paying for big star players coming in here, the, the, the message will have to moderate a little bit. But there's no reason not to be excited for the way that game was played and what the outcome was. On Twitter last night, Dan, I, I brought it up while watching the, the, the Packers and the Vikings play. Sunday's game takes on a whole new set of ramifications where you were thinking the Bears go into this game where it's really just going to be about like the way it's going to be sold is the history and the oldest rivalry in the NFL and all of that stuff. This now takes on, hey, the Bears are one and oh, and the Packers could be two games down in the division if they lose this game. They, they can already be at a, in a, an incredible deficit in the NFC North. That little bit of hope that a win brings, because the NFL is so wacky, especially early on in a season. Teams are trying to get on the same page. Quarterbacks are trying to get on the same page with their receivers. Aaron Rodgers had a hell of a time yesterday. He's been talking about it throughout the preseason, that he thinks that some of these guys are not ready. There were a bunch of guys in wrong spots yesterday. There were guys dropping passes that were easy, and they got exploited. Who's to say that the Bears can't do the same thing next week? And what that win does is it allows everyone to walk into this game, the Sunday night game, the last, last game of Sunday, to, to go, all right, maybe the Bears actually have a chance. What they've proven through one game is applied learning. And what I think is significant about that is the buy-in going forward. Because the coaches were right, because the idea of being in shape makes you less likely to make a mistake at the end of a game, players are going to be more open this week to listening to their coach. And the Bears can make, there's tons of things that they need to make corrections on, Dan. A ton. It's easier to do when you're coming off a win like that. These guys can celebrate. They can go through their, I think Iberflu said they got the 24-hour rule. They can celebrate today. And then when they walk back into the building on Wednesday, time to go to work. Well, it's also a choice that coaches make. And no matter what the sport, coaches will tell you the best time to coach hard is after a win. Yep. And ranting and screaming after a loss because you're frustrated could often fall on deaf ears. And you get a lot of the cliche stuff, well, we got to coach better and they got to play better. And everybody sits through film and waits for their turn to be in the barrel during film. But when you're coming off a win, when you say we need to still get better, we got the win, but it's not good enough. That's a Goldilocks just right kind of situation for some coaches to say, all right, good, all right, nice. We, we, it's better than the alternative. We'd rather be 1-0, but we can still be a lot better. And that way, you've got the perfect world for that week. You, you've got their concentration. You've got the energy of the victory. You're allowing them to think big things and dream big dreams until reality starts to hit. And it will. But you can delay it for a while. For a while. And, some, and sometimes you can fool yourself into, into a surprise. You get to delay it for a week. You get to delay it. Instead of them going out there and, and Nick Bosa manhandling the, the Bears, I will say that Braxton Jones did struggle with one-on-one -on -one single blocks mm -hmm. in the game, which is something I imagine they will talk about inside of their, their meetings this week. But instead of that being the case, and you, you kind of looking down at the ground and being like, all right, well, this is our lot in life because we don't have a really high talent threshold on this team – you get to put all of that to the side and you get to say, hey, we win this game next week. We're in first place, like for real, for real in the NFC North. Like not kind of because like now it's kind of although the, the Vikings have actually won a game inside the division. But you get to be in first place for real if you win the game. I can't stress enough the significance that this game takes on now for this group of Bears that wasn't there before kickoff at noon yesterday.